What is plate tectonics and why does it affect millions of people every year? Well, before we answer that question, we need to talk about the theory behind plate tectonics. In a nutshell, plate tectonics seeks to explain how a number of seemingly unrelated geologic processes can be united together into one grand unifying theory. So let's dig in and take a look. The theory of plate tectonics has two major prongs. The first prong proposes that the Earth's crust is broken into large segments that move relative to each other. The second prong proposes that the seafloor is actually spreading apart. Today, such ideas don't seem too far-fetched. But back in the 19th and early 20th centuries, such ideas were preposterous. This is why the theory of plate tectonics didn't really get a foothold in the geologic world until the early 1960s, nearly 50 years after its first draft. Continental drift was first proposed by German meteorologist Alfred Wegener in the early 1900s. Essentially, Wegener was convinced that the continents had once been connected together into a massive supercontinent that he called Pangaea, meaning literally all the Earth. According to Wegener, this continent broke apart into the different continents that we have today. So what drove Wegener to propose such a wild idea? Well, first of all, he noticed the similarity between the coastlines of Africa and South America. Secondly, he noticed that the rocks and fossils of Africa and South America, as well as those of Antarctica, India and Australia, were all almost identical. These two pieces of evidence, along with some other less compelling but important observations, caused Wagner to propose that Africa, South America, Antarctica, Australia and India, as well as some other continents, were all once connected into the giant supercontinent of Pangaea. Of course, today we've got no problem with these ideas, but poor old Wegener was not really given a fair shake of the sauce bottle. In fact, it would take nearly 50 years in the general acceptance of seafloor spreading before the scientific world would accept Wegener's ideas. So let's fast forward 50 years and have a look at the modern version of moving continents before we get to seafloor spreading. The Earth's crust is composed of eight large crustal plates and a number of other smaller ones. Together, these plates make up what we call the crust. Importantly, these plates are composed of the rigid outer layer of the Earth's crust called the lithosphere and the less rigid but mostly solid asthenosphere. The boundary between the lithosphere and the asthenosphere is thought to contain liquid magma and thus may serve as the lubricant upon which the lithosphere moves over the asthenosphere. The second idea, that of seafloor spreading, is tightly related to the idea of moving plates. Harry Hess, a young geologist from Princeton University, he liked Wegener's ideas about moving continents, but he wanted to improve on it by proposing that the seafloor moved as well. In his model, Hess proposed that the seafloor moves away from a central ridge and then disappears into the mantle at another location. Most scientists now believe that this conveyor belt-like movement of the seafloor occurs because of something called mantle convection. In this model, hot, pliable rock moves up from the Earth's core. As it reaches the top of the asthenosphere, the pliable ductile rock splits into two directions and moves in opposite directions, effectively pulling the lithosphere with it, hence the name seafloor spreading. Wegener's ideas were only taken seriously when people realized that plate spreading can also occur in the middle of a continent. Once the continent is ripped in two, the moving lithosphere carries the continents with it. And voila, just like that you have continental drift. Together, Wegener's continental drift and Hesse's seafloor spreading gave birth to our modern notion of plate tectonics. Well, in part two, we will take a closer look at all of the mechanisms associated with plate tectonics, such as divergent and convergent plate boundaries, as well as how plate tectonics unites a whole host of other geologic processes into one grand unifying theory. 
Okay, it's time now for our creation fact of the week. Did you know that the first person to come up with continental drift was a creationist? No, I'm not talking about Alfred Wegener. More than 60 years before Wegener proposed his idea, French young earth creationist Antonio Snyder Pellegrini proposed the same idea using much of the same evidence, including the similarity of fossils on different continents. These sketches come from Snyder Pellegrini's book, which he published in 1858. Notice the similarity of Snyder Pellegrini's maps to those of Wegener's. Of course, Snyder Pellegrini did not believe the separation of Pangaea occurred slowly over millions of years. In his theory, better called continental sprint, Snyder Pellegrini believed Pangaea broke apart as a result of Noah's flood. Recently, creationists have revisited Snyder Pellegrini's idea by proposing what they call catastrophic plate tectonics or CPT. Like Snyder Pellegrini, many modern young earth creationists propose that the breaking apart of Pangaea occurred catastrophically, probably during the flood of Noah or maybe just before or just after. This of course may be difficult for many people to accept. After all, the world's tectonic plates today move very, very slowly, literally at the rate that your fingernails grow. So is there any evidence at all that can help us break free from the dictating power of personal experience? And the answer is yes, there is some evidence that supports the notion of rapidly moving tectonic plates. In the Afar Triangle in Ethiopia, a 37 mile long, 25 foot wide section of the earth opened up literally overnight. Over the next few months, hundreds of other fissures appeared throughout the area, some of which were filling up with fresh basaltic magma sourced from deep within the asthenosphere. One such gash was 1500 feet long and 200 feet wide. Now, no, we are not talking about sort of sprinting plates here, but neither does this kind of tectonic activity accord with plates that supposedly move at just a few centimeters a year. So this is really intriguing. Secondly, a strong piece of evidence supporting CPT is the existence of still cold slabs of subducted lithosphere in the mantle. By cold, I mean that there is a 3000 degree difference centigrade in temperature between these old oceanic slabs and the mantle that surrounds the slabs. But these slabs are thought to have been down there for a hundred million years. You would think that at the very least the temperatures between the subducted slabs of ocean floor and the mantle would have come to equilibrium by now. Thirdly, rapidly moving and subducting plates has been scientifically modeled. And yes, normal physics does allow for the possibility. See this paper by John Baumgartner for more details. Of course, the most important piece of evidence supporting CPT are the scriptures themselves. In Genesis 7, 11, the Bible says that on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth. Now, what exactly fountains are is up for grabs, but that it involves some deep sea crustal movement on a global scale seems pretty straightforward. Forward. Well, that's it from me, Dr. C here with Creation Geology for Beginners. If you like this video, please go ahead, smack that like button and hit the subscribing button while you're there. For more resources, you can go to my website, www.creationunfolding.com and you can also buy my book. Thank you and goodbye.